Hi, this is Niels on behalf of Sirian and Gimli. Welcome to this short demonstration about self-issued OpenID Connect Authentication, or SEOP for short, which we will be using together with OpenID Connect for verifiable presentations. This means we will do peer-to-peer -peer authentication between two parties using decentralized identifiers and without having a third-party identity provider you typically see when using OpenID Connect. The verifiable presentations allow the user, which is an OpenID provider, to submit verifiable credentials as part of a verifiable presentation to the web app, the so-called relying party. The relying party will be providing a definition of what it would like to, to receive from the user. So um, on the screen you see here, I have what is called a verifiable credential. In this case, it's an example credential for a YouTube channel owner, and it contains some information about the owner um, as well as the channel. Um, at the bottom, there is the proof, um, which also contains a signature, and it's using a DID on the Ethereum network. Um, and let's assume for the sake of the example um, that it was issued by YouTube itself. So, um, next on the screen, I have what is called a presentation definition, uh, conforming to the presentation exchange specification. This is a specification which basically allows a uh, credential verifier um, to tell uh, to a credential holder what type of credentials it would like to receive, as well as what info it needs from it for what purposes. In this example, we have kept it really simple. Uh, basically, we want to receive the whole credential um, but only if it's a YouTube channel owner credential, which is specified using the schema at the bottom. Um, there's also a, a purpose field um, at the top. You can log in if you are a YouTube channel owner. Um, this purpose field is, for instance, uh, handy to display um, to the actual user logging in um, so that they know what the credential will be used for. Under the hood, um, this uses the CEOP uh, library uh, we have created uh, together, um, and it's also using our presentation exchange library, uh, which can verify those presentation definitions from the verifier perspective. Um, on the holder side, it can interpret that specification and can locally process a list of all the verifiable credentials you typically have in a wallet or app and match them against the definition and filter out all those matches. Um, of course, the user still is uh, very much still involved because he needs to review the actual selections that were made. Um, of course, if there's no matches, the library can tell uh, that to the user, and of course, we would not be doing any authentication. Uh, but on the other hand, it could also be that the selections are a bit too broad because there might be multiple uh, credentials that could match a certain requirement, for instance. So in the end, it's always the holder uh, that has a final say and a final check. Um, and then uh, the library, again, does a check because the holder has done his selection. Um, it, it does a check uh, to see whether we're still conforming uh, and, and satisfying uh, the presentation definition, after which uh, the verifiable presentation gets created and submitted to the verifier. Um, then the verifier can use the library as well um, to basically do a similar check whether the verifiable presentation conforms to the definition. So uh, let's start with um, the app um, because that's the actual um, uh, presentation. Um, so I'm going to start up the app, uh, which is the Gimli ID app for the very first time. Um, first of all, I have to sign up. Um, so let's do that. Um, I have to create a pin code. I have to verify that PIN code. Um, that PIN code is, of course, to make the app secure, but it also um, ensures that the uh, private key um, are protected. Um, in the background, it's now setting up um, the keys. So now it's time uh, to write down uh, the seed, the recovery phrase. Um, of course, um, you need to write this down and uh, there should be a check, but for demo purposes, we're not going to do that. So let's skip that. Um, I've written down all the 24 words. Uh, in, uh, it's now going to ask me for my uh, name. So let's enter those. And for my date of birth, well, let's just pick a random value. It's close enough, I guess. And done. 
And now um, it wants, it has a button uh, that says, okay, um, create your own uh, Gimli ID uh, identity. So let's click on that button. And as you can see, uh, it has uh, issued four credentials. Uh, those are self-issued credentials. Um, so it has the last name uh, that I just uh, provided. Um, it has uh, the date of birth that I just provided. And um, it also has a YouTube channel owner uh, credential. Of course, in uh, the real world, I wouldn't be issuing my own YouTube channel owner credential. And that would have been something that was issued by a third party. Um, in this case, YouTube, uh, for instance. Um, but we are just using this uh, for the example. So uh, in uh, this demo, um, uh, we have uh, this web app. And this web app only allows you to log in uh, when the user has a YouTube channel owner credential. The interesting bit, though, is that the web app knows nothing about the user yet. Uh, the user is not registered at all. It has nothing in its database. It doesn't even have a database. Uh, the mere fact that uh, the user has a credential from YouTube stating uh, that he or she is a channel owner is enough uh, in this example. So first, um, I will uh, click on the sign in button. So now a QR code appears, and I will be using uh, my Gimli ID app to scan uh, that QR code, uh, QR code using my phone. So as you can see, it has now uh, scanned uh, the QR code. Um, the display has changed to please, please approve the authentication request in your app. And if we look in the app itself, um, it mentions the purpose we saw earlier. Um, you can log in if you are a YouTube channel owner. And it also contains, in this case, the, the ID of the issuer, um, so of the web app. Um, of course, we could show way more information in there and, and do it in a nicer way as well. Um, this is, again, just an example. So let's uh, do the authentication. And as you can see, I'm now logged in. Um, I'm uh, in this website. And um, uh, the button has changed to a sign out button. And let's go to um, this page, um, which is a demo page we have created uh, based on the Copyrightly app. Um, and we've made some modifications to this app, um, to this website to basically show how an integration with credentials uh, could look like. Um, so at the bottom, uh, we have the show channel owner from authentication, which basically is using the information um, that we provided. Um, so it has um, uh, my name in here, and it has a channel. Um, that it's, it might be a bit confusing because the channel is actually called Robert, Roberto Garcia. Um, that has to do with the fact that in the rest of this page, um, all the claims and all the authorship is also about that same channel. Um, so we've used that one. So it's, it's a bit confusing that my name is in there as well, I guess. Um, so let's say um, that there was um, a, a copyright dispute or something like that. Um, it could be that um, we want to basically show um, that, um, uh, that there's evidence of the authorship. Um, and uh, Copyright League could, for instance, provide that. So it, it has infrastructure um, to register um, copyright claims, et cetera. But it, in this use case, we're also basically creating a proof um, using a verifiable credential. Um, so during the login phase, we uh, send in a verifiable presentation uh, to Copyrightly um, without uh, them knowing about us. In this case, uh, we are going to receive a uh, credential. So again, it opens a QR code, let's scan that. And as you can now see on uh, my mobile app, um, it shows the information about this actual copyright claim, which is coming from uh, Copyrightly. And I can accept or reject that. Um, so let's accept it. And as you now can see, it's stored in the Gimli ID wallet, so at the, at the bottom. Um, and of course, I can open it again uh, and uh, show it. So as a final step, in this demo, um, I'm going to sign out. And um, what happens is this access denied uh, screen. Obviously, in a real world scenario, this wouldn't happen because you would be redirected, for instance, to a home screen or um, uh, to another page. Uh, we have only done that to show basically that this 
authorship URL we see in here is was really protected um, so that you really have to be logged in uh, to access it and you cannot log in uh, you cannot access it without being logged in so uh, that concludes my demo for a self-issued open ID provider with verifiable presentations allowing you to do authentication uh, with requirements on the credentials you would like to receive as a relying party and where the SSI wallet matches those credentials during the login phase. So only if the credential matches the definition, we are able to log in, allowing for use cases, for instance, to ingest credentials. So that doesn't necessarily have to involve authentication. Um, it allows for authentication without registration, like we've seen today. Um, and it's using authentication with the IDs. Um, the whole verifiable presentations integration um, is fully optional, um, so you can also do the plain authentication using the OpenID Connect protocol, but then with the IDs involved. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.